In the previous video, we learned how to provide the store to all the components in our application. In this video, let us learn the final bit. And that is, how do we get hold of the Redux state and how do we dispatch an action from within a React component? I'm going to go back to VS Code and open cakecontainer.js. Cake container is the component where we want to display the number of cakes, which is part of the Redux state. And this is also the component from which we want to dispatch the buy cake action on a button click. We are going to achieve the result in three steps. First step, we are going to define a new function. This function is called map state to props. You can name it anything you want to, but this is the convention and I would recommend you stick to the same. This function gets the Redux state as a parameter and returns an object. In our example, we just have the one state property that we are trying to access and that is the number of cakes. So within our map state to props function, I'm going to specify a property called number of cakes. And this is going to be equal to state dot number of cakes. And that is step number one. If you're slightly confused, just hang on for a few more minutes. Now, one thing I would like to point out here is about selectors. If you take a look at the official React Redux documentation, they maintain a separate file called selectors. So just like actions and reducers, there would be selectors. What it does is basically return some state information from the Redux store. In our example, selecting number of cakes is pretty straightforward. State dot number of cakes. However, in larger applications, you might perform some data transformation and then select only what is required. So instead of writing a couple of lines of code in the map state to props function, it is extracted into a separate file called selectors. Now I am not going to do that because our example is really simple and straightforward. I just wanted to make you aware of a term called selectors so that you know what the documentation is referring to. All right, let's move on to step number two. This again involves defining a new function. This time the function is called map dispatch to props. This function gets the Redux dispatch method as a parameter and again returns an object. In our application, we just have the one action creator. So within the object, I'm going to create a property called by cake. And this is going to be equal to an arrow function, which dispatches the action creator from Redux. Now we mentioned the action creator, but we haven't imported it yet. Let's do that. What I like to do is create a file called index.js from which I export all the action creators. So in the Redux folder, create index.js. And over here, we export the action creator by cake from cake slash cake actions. And now back in cake container, we can import it as import by cake from Redux. That is step number two, defining map dispatch to props. For step number three, we are going to connect these two functions with our React component. And for that, we use the connect function or the connect higher order component from the React Redux library. So at the top, import connect 
from React Redux. And at the bottom, while exporting our component, we connect the two functions. So export default connect map state to props map dispatch to props with the cake container. What this connect function does is basically what the two function names specify. In the first function, the state from the Redux store is mapped to our component props. So apart from whatever props cake container was receiving, it will now receive an additional prop called number of cakes which reflects the number of cakes in the Redux store. So number of cakes, props, props dot number of cakes. Similarly, map dispatch to props will basically map our dispatch of an action creator to a prop in our component. So our component now receives a second additional prop called by cake which will basically dispatch the by cake action. What this allows us to do is within our component, we can now specify on click is equal to props dot by cake. And that is about it. If I now save all the files and take a look at the browser, you can see that we have the number of cakes set to 10. I click on buy cake and the count decreases. Click again, the count keeps on decreasing. So our cake shop application is working as expected. Let me go over the code one more time to help you understand how it all works. First is map state to props. When you want to access the Redux state in your component, you define the map state to props function. It gets the Redux state as a parameter which can be used to retrieve the appropriate state properties. In our case, we map state dot number of cakes to a prop called number of cakes, which we then render in the JSX. Similarly, for dispatching actions, we have the map dispatch to props function. This function gets the dispatch method as a parameter and allows us to map action creators to props in our component. In our example, we map dispatching by cake to a prop called by cake. This allows us to call by cake as props dot by cake. And all this is possible because of the connect function from React Redux. The connect function connects a React component to the Redux store. In our case, it connects cake container to the Redux store. So that is the most basic pattern you can have with React and Redux. If you're struggling to put the pieces together, watch the last few videos on React Redux again. You will get a much better idea of how to connect your React app with Redux. Alright then, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe, I'll see you guys in the next video.